Hello, 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 hello everybody. It's Yvonne Ruke at Povetter. Welcome to our Facebook live chat for today. So today is February 3rd, two th oh, February 5th, 2017. I'm excited about 2017. And like I said in one of the posts I had before, not because 2017 is going to be an easy year. I can see so many challenges ahead already in terms of 2017, but I'm still very much excited about it. Um, so my name is Yvonne Ruka Poveta, your change motivator. A little bit about me, I'm a change consultant, an organizational change management consultant, a change motivator, an author, and a speaker. I enjoy, I absolutely enjoy, I love working with professionals and organizations to help them transition through change and help them to achieve their goals. So what have I got in stock for you today? Today is all about accountability partners. That's what I want to share with you. So for the last month, a uh, couple of months, um, starting January, you know, I made the decision that I will hold bi-monthly sessions where I will reach out to you guys and let's talk about 2017. Let's talk about how we can achieve our goals in 2017. What do we need to be doing differently in 2017 to help us achieve our goals? Um, like so many of us, at least I know myself, um, 2016, there were some goals that I had set and I didn't get to achieve those goals. And so many of us have some, some of those goals that we set and we don't get to achieve them. So 2017 is about achieving our goals. So I know we have some people joining. Welcome, Renee. Great to have you on board. Thanks for your support. Nice to have you on board. So it's all about 2017 and how we can make it awesome. And so why accountability partner? I think, you know, some people might say accountability partner. Why? What's so special about accountability partner? And it sounds boring, actually, if you think about it. You know, it sounds like a lot of work in terms of having an accountability partner. And so many times we don't want to do that work at all. I mean, I don't want to do any work in terms of getting, you know, trying to achieve my goals. It's easier to just go out there and make it happen. But the reason why accountability partnership is really, really something I want to talk about is I got into it about two, three years ago. That was my first um, exposure to accountability partner. And this was a colleague who were in the same field in the area of speaking, coaching, and we decided, let's do it. You know, we both chose each other. And that was the year that I made so much more difference in my goals. That was the year that I actually knocked my goals out of the park. So that's why I'm so, you know, passionate about the thought of accountability partnership. And last year I decided not to have any accountability partnership and I, I, I could see where I was with my goals compared to the years where I decided to have an accountability partner. So this year um, I do have an accountability partner again and it's made so much difference. You know, um, in the one month that I've had the opportunity to have an accountability partner, it's been, what can I say? I've I've been able to lose 10 pounds that I struggled to lose last year. You know, I've been able to, you know, start making income. I've been able to make partnerships. You know, I've been able to do so, so much more. So that's why to me, it's really important to have accountability partners. And I want to share with you some of the things around accountability partner. So today I'm going to be sharing with you the five Y's or the five W's of accountability partners and with the one H. So five W's of accountability partner and one H. So if you have an accountability partner, you know what? Just if you've come across the term, heard it, just put yes there. So I want to hear from you. Do you have an accountability partner? If you do, just say yes, type in yes. If you don't have an accountability partner, type in no. If you've never heard about accountability partner, just say never heard of it before. So I want to get a sense of you guys. Do you have an accountability partner? What are your thoughts on accountability partner? So just type it in there below. I want to read your comments and your thoughts on it. So today I'm going to touch on the five W's of accountability partner. 
So first of all, an accountability partner is somebody who you have given permission to be answerable to. So when you have an accountability partner, you're giving that person permission to be answerable to them. So I have it written down there, someone you give permission to be answerable to so that they can help you work towards a commitment or responsibility or the goals to which you have. So that's what an accountability partner is. It could be one-sided, it could be two-sided. So you could have somebody where you guys are mutually working together and you're both accountable to each other. So you share your goals with them and they keep you accountable and on the other side, they share their goals with you and you keep them accountable. Or it could be one-sided, whereby you just it could be somebody like you have as a mentor or a coach and they also act as your accountability partner. So it's just one-sided where they keep you, they ensure that you're answerable to whatever those goals are. The purpose of an accountability partner at the end of the day is somebody who can motivate you, someone who can encourage you, and someone who can call you out on your BS. And I said that, BS, somebody who will call you out on your BS. So I remember my accountability partner, you know, that I had, this was a business accountability partner. We both had very similar goals. And he would say to me, oh, have you launched this product or service? What are you doing? This was an area. I said, oh, I'm not ready. You know, I still need to do some studying. I still need to develop the product. And you know what he said to me? He said, BS, you're ready. You're not going to be any more ready than you are right now. So just go ahead and do it. So he actually just pushed me to do it. So even though I thought I wasn't ready, even though I thought it wasn't the right time, he still went ahead and just said, do it, make it happen. And I'm so glad I listened to him and I did it because it was through doing it that I launched the product and I was able to bring in income. So I had people buying the service and product. There I was saying, I'm not ready. And honestly, if he hadn't pushed me to do it, I'm very sure that I would have pushed it to the next year and the year after. And so that's the value of an accountability partner to me more than anything. Somebody who will call you out on your BS, somebody who will encourage you to do what it is that you need to do, and somebody who will motivate you when you need to. So it's that, you know, like uh, I say to my accountability partner I've had in the past before, I call him my paddy for jungle. <laughs> So that's a colloquial tale we have, my paddy for jungle, you understand? Because he's the person who is there with me to, you know, help me through all those things I have. And that's what I have in my accountability partner right now. So why should you have an accountability partner? So I have some points I have here, you know, anybody can set a goal. Anybody can write down a goal. Anybody can want to have a goal. So at the beginning of 2017, we all wrote down our goals. We all said what it was we wanted to achieve. Fair enough. But what it would take for us to achieve that goal is consistency. It would take us day in, day out, working on that goal to achieve it. So I want to get a feel from you guys. How many of you have been consistent in achieving your goals day in, day out? You've been doing those things you set out to do. We had all these action plans we listed out that we're going to do. How many of us have been consistent with it? That's what an accountability partner helps us to do, to be very consistent. So I meet personally with my accountability partner every two weeks. So when it's nearly two weeks, like I'm meeting with my accountability partner to, um, tomorrow, the first thing I do before, you know, is go back quickly to, you know, the goals we listed out, the action points and said what I said I was going to do. And if I find that I haven't done what it is that I said I was going to do, I quickly go and do it, you know, because I really don't want to have to say to her, you know, that I haven't done it or come up with an excuse. And that's what an accountability partner helps you with. When you know you're going to have to go back to somebody and tell them what you achieved or you didn't achieve or why you didn't do it, that makes you more accountable. And that's the purpose of an accountability partner in terms of doing what it is you need to do. So they will help you keep going day after day, session after session. So um, an accountability partner helps with consistency. Actually, according to research, people who have accountability partner increase their chances of achieving their goals by 33% more, 33% more. So imagine increasing your chances of achieving your goals, not by 5%, not by 10%, but by 33% more. That's the value of having an accountability partner. And you know, one of the other things is that depending on the kind of goal you're trying to achieve, whether it be a business goal, 
whether it be a career goal, the journey can be very hard. It can be very lonely. You know, you're out there, you're in the grind, you're do day after day. It can be very lonely. It can be very hard. It can be very demotivating sometimes. But by having an accountability partner, what happens is that you have somebody who is encouraging you along the way. When you feel alone, there's somebody there. So even for instance, myself, my accountability partner I have, she happens to be somebody who has done, has had similar goals as I've had in the past. She's done what I've done in the past. So when I feel a little bit down or when I feel like I'm struggling and I'm not sure what the next step is to take, I can actually say, I can actually share with her what I'm doing. And she's also a sounding board. So that's what an accountability partner will help you with as well. So your accountability partner can be also a sounding board for you to share what you're going through and they can offer you not only motivation and encouragement and in some situations they can actually offer you advice in terms of what you need to do. So when should you consider having an, an accountability partner? So when you have a goal that you're committed to. So if you don't have a goal that you're committed to, don't bother. So by show of hands out there, you know, send me a um, like, send me a love. Just, I want to hear from you. Are you committed to your goals? That's the question I have for you. So tap a button there. I just want to see you're there. Tell me yes. Send me a like, send me a thumbs up and everything. Are you committed to your goals? Are you committed to achieving your goals in 2017? And I'm sure you say, of course, I'm committed to achieving my goals in 2017. But if that's the case, what are you doing to ensure that you achieve your goals in 2017? So that one thing you can do is have an accountability partner. By having an accountability partner, you're more sure to achieve those goals. Like remember I said earlier, you increase your chances of achieving your goals by 33% if you have an accountability partner. An accountability partner will also help in making sure you're consistent. So if you struggle with day in, day out, having to keep at it, having to continue achieving your goals, then you need an accountability partner. They will help you to remain consistent. Because when, like I said, for me, every time I know that I have to go out there and tell my accountability partner what I did in the last week or in the last two weeks, you know, there's nothing like being consistent. So I'm going to have to report to my accountability partner by tomorrow what I did in the last two weeks. And I'm not looking forward to that session. So I have to ensure that I get my skates on and be able to tell her what it is that I did. Another thing that an accountability partner has helped me do, you know, like I said about consistency, you know, and is by being consistent, you know, they challenge you each of the day. Oh, you said you were going to do that. Did you do it? That's one of the things they do for me. So if you find that you're struggling to achieve your goal, it's something that you struggled with last year, you've struggled with the previous year, maybe what you need to do this year is consider having an accountability partner that will help you make the difference. Okay. Who can be your accountability partner? That's a big question. You know, I've had people come up to me with questions. So for people who have an accountability partner, I want you to type in there. I want to see some of your answers in terms of who do you choose as an accountability partner? Is it a friend? Is it a business colleague? Is it um, um, a family member? I just want to see. So by show of all those people who have an accountability partner, or if you're thinking of having an accountability partner, I want you to type in there what's who you're considering to ask to be your accountability partner because you're going to have to ask them to be your accountability partner. So like I mentioned, it can be a business colleague, somebody whom two of you have very similar backgrounds, two of you are driving towards achieving the same type of goals, that, that's usually very, um, I would say that's the best. I mean, when I, when I had an accountability partner, <coughs> excuse me, when I had an accountability partner about, um, two, three years ago, the, the person I had two, three years ago was actually a colleague whereby we had very similar goals. So it was always easy for us to bounce off each other in terms of what we were trying to achieve. You know, whether we were talking about our speaking engagement, whether we we're talking about our coaching we're really able to bounce off each other in terms of what we were trying to do. So if you having an accountability partner in the same field as you can be awesome. You can have to also have a friend, a friend who 
you know, is very supportive of you, or you guys are very supportive of each other, you do a lot of things together, that also can be somebody who can be your accountability partner. You can also have your spouse. So <laughs> I had somebody reach out to me after three sessions, um, the first session we had at the beginning of the year when we spoke about accountability partner. She said, can my husband be my accountability partner? And my answer to that was sure, but it doesn't always work for every couple because they may not be committed to the process, but you feel that because you're both partners, you should be accountability, uh, you should both be each other's accountability partners. Sometimes it can be demotivating if you guys are not on the same page. Yes, it's, it's awesome to have them as your accountability partner, but you guys have to mutually agree and want to be on the same page and want to achieve the same type of goals and be committed to the process. So commitment is a key success factor. So I'm going to talk about key success factors um, in a little bit. So having um, one of the key success factors is commitment. So that's very key. So if your spouse is committed to the process, by all means, have them as an accountability partner. Like um, you can also have a colleague at work. Maybe there's somebody you work with regularly. You guys are driving towards similar goals. So a colleague at work or a business colleague mentioned that earlier. A pair, a pair, a mentor, a coach, somebody who is coaching you through something or a mentor. Those are some examples of um, people that you can use as accountability partner. You can also make it a family affair. So if you're the type of family where you get together regularly, maybe you have some family goals that you're working towards and the kids have shared with you what their goals are and you know, you, you can make it really fun. So imagine having your kids together. Maybe you guys have a family meeting or a group meeting. You guys meet weekly or bi-weekly and you guys share, okay, this was what we said we were going to do last week. How did we get on with it? Isn't that so much fun? Imagine having an accountability group of with your friends or not just your friends, sorry, with your family, with your kids, you, your kids that are even six years old or 10 or 13. It, at the same time, you're also instilling in them a sense of discipline in terms of working towards their goals. So I definitely encourage you to consider having, you know, family accountability session. If you have an accountability partner as, um, or you have your family whereby you do accountability together, I know I want to say a thumbs up. I want you to drop a comment in there. I want you to tell me how you guys do it, you know. So tell me, I don't do it with a f um, family. I tend to do mine with friends and colleagues. So tell me, put a comment in there. I want to hear from you. How do you actually run your accountability, If you, especially if you have it with your family? Tell me about it. I really want to hear about it. You could also have group accountabilities. So this was something we spoke about um, last month whereby you can set up a Facebook group, whereby you have accountability, whereby everybody comes, they set their goals together, they report on their goals regularly. Um, one of the things that I remember doing, uh, I've done in the past when it came to weight loss was actually something called the biggest loser. So we had this accountability group where weekly we had to get on the scale and weigh ourselves and email it into each other. So that's a form of accountability. I've also had a group accountability for my business whereby we each set a goal at the beginning of each week, you know, how frequently we were going to reach out to um, make certain calls to customers and potential clients, how many calls we we're going to make, you know, what we we're going to do with our um, social media in terms of management, how many proposals we had to have out each day, we spoke about how many books or personal development things we needed to do. So by having those set goals, we had a very common goal. So with group accountability, you have very common goals, very um, common action steps, and then you each come back at the end of each week and you report on what it is that you were supposed to do, any struggles you had, any challenges you had, and you set goals for the next week. So you can have individual, you can have family, you can have group accountability. Um, like I mentioned in the past, I've had both a friend as well. I've had a business colleague and, um, I've had family. So I've even had family accountability group on WhatsApp. So you have so many tools out there these days that you can use for group accountability. Um, with my, um, um, with my, um, current accountability partner, we actually have a web conference 
So we web conference, we have our PowerPoint presentations, and we go through our listed goals and we go through our wins. You, on WhatsApp group, we just share, send in, you know, pictures, whatever it is, share what our wins are and our struggles. So whichever one you choose, there's always a way to do it. So even that goes into the how. You know, how do you do it? it? You know, like I just said, you could do it through groups, you could do it through web conference, you could do it through phone calls, you know, set a time each week or, you know, bi-weekly or monthly, you know, so depending on the frequency of your goals, so depending on the type of goals that you're working towards, if it's something whereby you see results, you should be seeing results daily or very frequently or weekly, you need to see results, then you set weekly accountability. If it's something that it takes more time to manifest, but you want to keep connected, you set it bi-weekly. And if it might be something that it's a long-term goal that you're working towards, say for over a year or three years or two years, one, two or three years, then you might want to set monthly accountability because you don't get to see the results within a short period. So depending on the frequency on which you can see the results of what you're working towards will determine how um, the frequency at which you need to have your accountability. Um, so if you have any questions, you know, at the end, I'll be taking questions. So just type in your questions and I want to hear from you. I want to know that you're there. I know we have a few people on, so I want to hear from you. I want to read from you. So just type in your comments and um, your questions, and I'm going to take questions at the end, any questions you have. Um, another way that how the process works is that you have to find someone that you respect. Respect is very key. Someone that you feel can challenge you, and you, like I said at the very beginning, you, you can answer to. Respect, mutual respect is very, very important. You don't want somebody that, you know, they come and ask you, you know, how did that go? How did it go? Did you achieve your goals? You know, what was that thing you said you were going to do? And you say, please, you know, leave that one for now. <laughs> you understand? You have, you, you have the ability to push or brush them aside. That's not going to work. So that's why whether it be your partner, whether it be your friend, it's important that there's some level of respect and there's some level of commitment that you can answer to them. So someone you respect and you feel will challenge you to be committed is very, very key. It's important that you set ground rules on how you would like the relationship to work. Ground rules would include if we're going to meet every week and we agree. So um, we're going to check in, you know, every certain amount. So maybe you might say we're going to meet monthly, but every week, you know, we should check in by email to see how we're, go how we're doing. So set ground rules in terms of what it is that you're trying to achieve. Your how as well is, you know, share your goals. Make sure that they're very clear, specific goals that you and your partner can keep track of. So if the goals are very high level and they say, oh, um, um, I want to start a business this year. When you guys meet every two weeks or every one week or every month, how are you going to track towards those goals? So it's important that you have very, very specific steps that you're tracking towards when it comes to achieving those goals. So that when you meet in a week's time or you meet in two weeks time or in a month's time, you can say, you said you were going to write your business plan. Have you written your business plan? You said you were going to make 10 calls for that potential business client. Have you made those calls? You said you were going to write your resume and have your resume ready. Have you written your resume? You said you were going to, um, maybe if it's travel or you're going to book a flight to do something, or you said you were going to lose five pounds by the end of the month. Have you done that? You said you were going to go to the gym three times a week. Have you done that? So you have to have very clear action steps, you know, that you're driving towards. So that's all part of the how in terms of what you're doing. And you have to give your accountability partner permission to call you out. You have to give them permission. You have to give your uh, accountability partner to say permission to say, if I'm not doing it right, let me know. Give them permission in terms of how you want to be communicated to. So that's all part of the ground rules. There is no point, you know, having an accountability partner whereby you, you have BS going on and you don't want them to tell you <laughs> it's all BS. You have to give them permission to speak truth into what you're saying. 
There is no hiding behind excuses when it comes to your accountability partner. You guys are going to be vulnerable to be each other. You're going to be naked to each other. You understand? When I say naked, I see your emotions are going to be naked to each other because they would see through you. And that's what you expect. You have to be truth to the whole process in order for the process to work. And we, um, another way is the where. So remember I told you we're going to do the five W's and the one H. So we've spoken about the what, the why, when, who. We've also spoken about how, but we also, and where. So like I mentioned earlier, in person, in phone, over and web conference as well. Those are some of the ways that, you know, you can, um, some of the ways and the process in which you can have it. I also want to talk about one more W. And one more W is what are the success factors? to this process. The first is trust. You have to trust each other. No point going to somebody that you think is going to be stealing your clients. No point going to a friend that you feel is jealous of what it is that you're doing that you don't trust. No point going to somebody that you don't believe in or you don't feel the integrity is there. It's very, very key that there is trust between you and your accountability partner. There has to be respect. That's a key success factor. They, you guys have to respect each other. You know, you have to respect what they have to say to you. If you don't respect what your accountability partner is saying to you, it's not going to work. Just forget it. No, it's not going to work. So respect, trust is key, and commitment to the process is very, very key. You, ha they, you have to be committed to the process. You have to be committed to show up. So I remember being part of this accountability group. OMG. It was so frustrating. We were three in that group. But one of the things about that group is we had been assigned to it. So this was all part of some group we were, and they set us up in this um, group process. And that's why I said sometime, um, at one point in time that you know, they has, it has to be mutual. So at this point in time, we're all part of this group. And we had a set time we were meeting every week. But one week after the other, one person would show up, the other person wouldn't show up. And there wasn't any consistency to the process. So if some, if accountability has to work, Everybody has to be committed to the process. If not, so you start to find yourself really frustrated with it. You come in with something to report and the other person doesn't even have anything to report. They haven't worked on their goals. That is the most frustrating thing. And you start to think, what am I doing this for? You understand? It, 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 it starts to feel very frustrated. So that's why commitment is really, really key. Don't choose an accountability partner that you're going to beg to be your accountability partner. If that person is not willing to be your accountability partner when you ask them, then forget it. If you want, how do you go about um, asking somebody to be your accountability partner? First of all, look at somebody who you have similar goals. So if you guys find you're in the same field, you have a rapport and you feel that, you know, you guys tend to talk about the same things all the time. So you're driving towards the same goal. That's a perfect person to have as an accountability partner. If you ask the person and the person says, um, no, I don't think so. I don't have the time. Don't, don't try and convince them otherwise that they should be your accountability partner because it's not going to work and you're going to be very frustrated. That's one way to choose it. So if it's your partner, it's usually easy to ask them to be your accountability partner because you just turn to them and say, Oi, do you want to be my accountability partner? They might feel obliged to say yes because they are married to you and they might say, if this person, don't, if I don't say yes, you know, I'm not going to hear it for the next how long. So, you know, so have that honest and truthful conversation. Remember, like I said, it doesn't have to be your partner. It can be anybody. The, that's why it's important. It has to be mutual. The other person has to want to do it in order for it to be successful. I have been successful. Some of the ways I've been successful with having an accountability partner is writing my book. I remember my accountability partner said to me, he came back to me one time. He went for a book launch of somebody else. And he came back to me and said, oh, I just attended this book launch. I said, oh, nice. He said, I want to ensure that this year I attend your book launch. 
I said, um, okay, yes. He said, no, this year I'm going to attend your book launch. And that motivated me more than anything to keep me going because every time we would meet, he would say, so how is it going? You know, I didn't have a choice. I walked towards that goal because of my accountability partner. And that's the same thing that can happen to you. My accountability partner pushed me to launch my business product. Having an, been part of an accountability group pushed me to lose weight when I did lose a lot of weight. So I lost about 80 pounds. And that was through being in accountability groups and partners where I was weighing in week after week. And I left that group. I thought, oh, I can do it on my own. You know, even though I hadn't finished losing all the weight I needed to do, um, lose, I thought I can do it on my own. And I went out in the big old bad wall to go do it on my own. And oh my gosh, I did put that weight back on, you know, because I wasn't done with the process. And I don't want to scare anybody by you thinking that, oh, does it mean that forever and ever and ever I would have an accountability partner? No, not necessarily. But it helps to have it. And then once you start to build the discipline and the routine in terms of having, um, um, working towards your goals and really truly build that discipline, then you can start to stand a little bit more on your feet. I'm a very self-motivated person, but yet I find the value of having an accountability partner. Let me just turn here. I don't know if you guys have any questions for me. We're at 5.30 respecting everybody's time. So I know it's a 30 minute session. So we've gotten to 30 minutes of the session. It's 5.30 now. I'm going to see if there are any questions that I will answer. You know, um, just look through some of the comments you guys hear. Um, I see a few of you just got in. Or oh, some of you say you have a friend with a similar goal. That's awesome. If you have any questions, just send it. Even if I don't uh, um, answer the questions right now, I always go back and answer the questions and just read through so you know would love to read any of those ones so if you have any questions just pop your questions at the bottom and i'll be sure to answer those questions and you know always love to read from you guys so it's 5 30 it's the end of today's session <laughs> i will i promise you guys i'll answer your questions so just type it in there um like i mentioned this is the live chat every two weeks i'm committed to it even though I'm not, even if sometimes I don't feel like doing it, my accountability partner always sends me a message. I haven't seen your invite yet. We haven't set it up and I'm sure she's going to be on this call. She's going to check in on this call to make sure that it's done. So again, that's the value of an accountability partner. She keeps on pushing me. She'll remind me. So I promise you, if not for myself, but because of her in two weeks time, you're going to see me again. Um, based on the questions I get, based on the topics we've discussed in the past, that's how I choose the next topic that I want to talk about. But would really love to hear from you. If you feel there's a topic that we should touch on and we should discuss, by all means, share with me. I want to hear what topics you think we can talk about. You know, I want this to be an interactive session. That's why I ask you guys questions and say, enter, 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 enter. So write your comments. It's been awesome. If you're there, you know, put a thumbs up there. I think I see a question Somebody says, can an accountability partner push you too hard? Um, no, not really. That's why I said at the beginning that you have to set the ground rules and you have to give them permission. Um, so depends on your personality. You might not want somebody consistently asking you. So you said, so with my, so as an example, with my accountability partner, we do bi-weekly. Bi-weekly, we challenge ourselves. So during the, we, between the, um, between those two weeks, we check in with each other, send a WhatsApp message. How is it going? How are you doing? It's the permission you give your accountability partner at the beginning that will determine how it runs through. If you tell them, if I'm not doing what I need to do, call me out, then that's not too much. And you know what? If they're calling you out, some people might feel just even one call out is too much. So it's a relative term. You know, the whole purpose of having an accountability partner is somebody that will push you to do what you need to do. But if you find that they're pushing you too, too hard, you can have a discussion with them and talk about it. And also too, the reason they might not push you too hard, if you're very clear on the action steps that you guys have agreed to take. So 
if at the beginning you've set some action steps and said, these are the things that I want to do. I want to write my resume by the end of February. And at the end of February, you haven't written your resume. Your accountability partner has every right to call you out March 1st and ask you, why haven't you written that resume? Your accountability partner also has the right to ask you before March, uh, before May, um, sorry, February 28th to say, how is it going with that resume you are going to write? And if you haven't written it or if you haven't started, they're well within their right to say, oh, why haven't you done it? When are you going to do it? Because that's the whole purpose of it, to push you. When you have an accountability partner, you're not working at your pace anymore. You're working at an agreed pace between you and your accountability partner. So with my accountability partner, we set some goals that this is what we're going to do weekly. This is what we want to achieve each month. So we have monthly milestones that we're working towards. We have monthly goals we're working towards. So if I don't meet those monthly goals or monthly milestones, she has every right to ask me, why haven't I met it? And if she hasn't met hers as well, if she told me she was going to do something the last time we spoke and she doesn't do it, I have every right to ask her, why didn't you do it? So again, that's why it's important to choose somebody that you guys are on the same wavelength. If you think it's somebody that is going to push you too hard and that's going to be, um, that's not going to work for you, by all means, don't work with them. But if you're the kind of person that you're not doing what you need to do and you feel that person will push you a lot, maybe that's what you need in your life. Somebody that will consistently push you to get towards what it is that you need to do. You know, <laughs> I see that question. Is there something, anything such as that? Yes, you know, it's possible they could push you too much. So it's all relative, you know. And if, you, um, if, I, if I found somebody that I thought would push me too much, maybe that's what I need. Somebody that would really, really push me. Because right now, I do need a lot of pushing <laughs> because I have these big, hairy, scary goals that I'm working towards. So any type of push would really be beneficial to me. Thanks for your question, Abimbala. Awesome, you know. Okie dokie. Yeah, so we've gone over a time. Like I said, if there's any questions, you know, just type it below. I will have another session in two weeks time. Send me a message. Let me know what you want us to talk about. Until then, have an awesome February. I'm excited about February, like I said, not because it doesn't have challenges, but because I know that I'm going to make it happen. <laughs> Thanks, guys. And have yourselves an awesome week. Bye. Sending you loads of hearts and loves and um, thumbs up, you know. Thanks, guys. Have a great day. Bye.